Hi everyone, welcome to The Sensual Chef, the all new healthy cooking show all about holistic healing foods that ignite passion and confidence through self-care cooking. My name is Kiali JL and I'm your Sensual Chef. A little bit about me, I am a certified holistic nutrition chef, a health and wellness coach and a sensuality coach based out of Brooklyn, New York, and I'm from the beautiful island of Guam. My mission is to help you fall in love with nourishing yourself and your partner through self-care cooking to attract the love and life you want and deserve. I make this happen by shifting your perspective to view food as energy. So you look at cooking as a sensual, healing, meditative ritual for yourself, as well as learning to focus in on your energy system. In addition to that, I help you understand how to balance flavors, how to respect your whole food ingredients. I give you a little bit of information about traditional Eastern medicine and how to enhance your senses in order to feed your soul. Today, I'm gonna to be making a delicious and flavorful Israeli lamb kebab with a savory bean-free hummus and a sweet and cooling strawberry and mint summer salad with a strawberry vinaigrette. It's gonna be amazing. Let me go over all of the ingredients. So all of the ingredients on the counter are the ingredients I'm gonna be using in this dish and it's going to be delicious. Now, the main thing that I talk about in my business and with my clients is the concept of elemental nourishment, which in traditional Eastern medicine is called the five phases of food. Traditional Eastern medicine and the five phases of food has existed for thousands of years and it's based on the idea that everything in the universe is related to one of the five natural elements and you've probably heard of these before. It's wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. All of these elements interact together to create balance. And each of these elements, it's really cool, they actually have different characteristics with different seasons, flavors, foods, colors, actions, organs, and functions of the body. So I've split up all of these foods into their elements to give you a little bit of an idea of what I'm talking about. So here are all the fire element foods. So I have some frisee, some strawberries, a red bell pepper, the lamb we're going to use, and some tahini. Fire element foods are mostly red foods and almost look like hearts. They bring joy and laughter and really boost your mood and energy levels. So the earth element foods I'm using today are pumpkin seeds and maple syrup. Earth element foods are mostly yellow, orange, or brown in color, and the associated season that it's with is the late summertime. When you think of earth element foods, think of root vegetables or small sweet fruits. They actually neutralize toxins and slow down acute symptoms in the body. So they're very healing and very grounding foods. The metal element foods I'm using today are fennel, red onion, and mint. Metal element foods are interesting because they're mostly savory, pungent foods. Think herbs and spices here, so you don't need a lot of metal element foods. When I think of metal elements, you also think of white foods as well. So white rice, milk, ginger, garlic, raw onion, white fish, mushrooms, Parmesan cheese. Umami is a flavor associated with the metal element foods. And what they do is the, they disperse energy into the body and promote respiration in the body. The water element foods I'm using today are black sesame seeds. And when you think of water element foods, think of calming and soothing in the body. And most of the foods in the water element are black, they're dark blue or purple. So think blueberries, eggplants, even dark foods like black sesame seeds, um, salted fish, pork, eggs, shellfish of any kind, and again, it's very healing for the kidneys and the bladder. So the last category of foods that I'm gonna be talking about are the wood element foods, which I'm gonna be using zucchini, sugar snap peas, lemon, 
and farro, which is a grain. So when you think of the wood element foods, think of springtime. All of the green vegetables are super stocky. They have sprouts and leaves at the end of them, and they're really sturdy vegetables. The flavor associated here is sour, which is really good for your body. So it really is great to purify your body, and it's very good for your liver and your gallbladder. So all that said, let's start making the lamb. So now we're gonna be making these delicious lamb skewers, which are super healthy for you. I'm gonna start with a half a pound of ground lamb. Then I have a quarter cup of flax meal. I have a bunch of spices. So I have ground cinnamon, ground cardamom, allspice, ground garlic, onions, red pepper flakes. It's gonna be super good. And it'll bring all of the flavors in the lamb all together. And then I have a quarter cup of some cilantro and parsley leaves I'm going to mince up. I have one egg yolk, and then I'm going to mince up a quarter of this onion, and then I'm gonna also mince up a quarter of this red bell pepper, as well as this garlic, and mix it all together. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take the dry ingredients and put them in with the lamb, as well as this egg yolk, and then I'm gonna mince up a bunch of the ingredients. So let's talk a little bit about lamb. Lamb is an extremely an amazing type of protein that I call my in moderation protein. It's super nutritious for you. About four ounces of lamb gives you over 60% of your daily protein intake. And so it's, and it's super flavorful. I love it as a protein. It's also extremely blood building in women, which is super important. And not just that, it helps re renew your stem cells so they actually promote new growth. It also has a ton of zinc in it, which as we know, is needed for maintaining a healthy immune system. I'm mincing up a quarter of a cup of parsley and cilantro, and these herbs are warming herbs in the body. And our stomach and our spleen love to be warm. They never like to be cold. But in addition to that, you're adding in a, some chlorophyll because these herbs are extremely cleansing in your body. And plus they add a bit of green. And whenever I cook, I like to add as much color as possible because you're also adding in those elemental nourishment properties as well. When mincing herbs, it's really important that the herb leaves are dry and you mince it as finely as possible. And so I really like to make this an experience when I cook and I teach my clients to do the same thing because cooking and working with your ingredients is so essential for your health. It's so important to touch all of your ingredients and make sure that you become one with them in a way. If you think about food and you think about nourishing your body, Everything that you put in your body is for a purpose. It's cleansing, it's nourishing, it's heating, it's cooling, and that's the cool thing about learning about elemental nourishment and how to feed your energy system. Done with this, I'm gonna take my pastry scraper, scoop it up, and put it inside. Next, I'm gonna cut the red bell pepper. Just need about that much. Red bell pepper is a really cool food. It is a fire element food, and it has so much vitamin C, and it gives your body a bunch of antioxidants and vitamins, and it's really, really good for you. I need about a quarter of a cup of these. mincing the red bell peppers. I'm just gonna take them up with my scraper and put them in the bowl. And next I'm just gonna mince up the onion and then the garlic. Onion and garlic are really cool metal element vegetables. They actually get rid of parasites in your body and they're extremely cleansing. My favorite way to mince onions is to slice it horizontally just like this. And this is the most tear-free way of doing it. And then slicing it again, 
vertically from the top. And I'll show you exactly how I do this because I tear very easily with onions. Slice down. Now I only need about a quarter cup, which I think that's gonna do it. Now of course you could always do this in a food processor if you have one. That's absolutely fine, but I really like to take time and mince all my food because like I said, connecting with my food is really important and it really helps hone in on my knife skills as well. So we're going to take those onions and put them in there. And the last thing is the garlic. So as I'm mincing up this garlic, I want to show you how to make garlic salt. So I want to mince this up as much as possible and make sure all of the pieces are pretty even. And this is one of the first things I learned in culinary school and it's really cool. And it's an easy way to get salt into the flavor of what you're making. So you just take a nice three, three finger pinch of salt and plop it on the garlic. And then what that's gonna do is that the salt is going to activate the garlic and bring out a lot of the moisture and the enzymes in the garlic. So let's just let that sit for a sec and then chop it up a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my knife and the end of the blade, and I'm just going to start to flatten it out a little bit. And if you can see this, the garlic starts to melt within the salt. And it's just a really cool way of getting the garlic to sort of melt together and have these flavors mesh together. So see how it's melted together? All right, then I'm gonna take this garlic salt paste and add it right in. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix it all together and then we're gonna start cooking. So for this process, I'm gonna wear gloves because it's just an easier thing to do. And I've also soaked my three skewers as well. There will be no splinters or anything in your lamb. It just it helps a lot to soak these ahead of time. So all you're gonna do is just take all of your ingredients and just fold them in together. And again, I really love doing this because I like connecting with my food and really feeling every single ingredient and just how it molds together. And it's super nourishing for your body and your mind and your soul to connect with your food as much as possible and really touch your food. We're very much a part of nature as human beings and so is, so is the food that we eat. So it's so important to really get in there and make sure you touch and honor your food as much as possible. Today I'm just gonna be making three skewers. This is more than enough. So the first thing I do is I take about two tablespoons in my hand and I just start to roll it together like this. And I wanna make sure that it's about three inches long or so and there are no cracks or holes in it, just like this. So it starts to take this shape here. And then I just take my skewer and push it all the way through and then mold it onto the skewer. This is super important. Lamb is a very soft and tender meat. So you wanna make sure that it's really stuck onto the skewer as much as possible. And these are super fun to make. So once you're done with one, just put it aside and we'll start to make others. All right, for the sake of the shot, I'm gonna put this away and then we can just keep on rolling, okay? So now that I have my three skewers ready, let's take it over to the stove and I'm gonna cook them on the cast iron pan. I turn my pan on medium heat and I love cooking on a cast iron pan and I'll tell you why. It's sturdy, it makes everything crisp and delicious and the truth is that every time you cook on a cast iron pan, you're adding more iron into your food so it's really healthy for you. So I'm just gonna take about a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil 
and wait for that to heat up. Just give it a couple minutes. I've also preheated the oven at 170 degrees because I'm gonna take the skewers and put them in there as we prepare all the other dishes to keep them warm. Every time you take any kind of protein off of a pan, it continues to cook internally. So I wanna make sure that it stays warm and it continues to cook as we put it in the oven. So that's why I've warmed it up to 170. I think this should be done. Yeah. Do you hear that sizzle? This is a sexy, sexy sound. So whenever I cook any kind of protein, I just let it sizzle for a little bit, and especially because these are on skewers, I'm gonna start to turn them slowly, so then that way they brown pretty evenly on all sides. Listening to the sizzles of your food is a really great way to bring awareness to your cooking. And it really is a sensual process when you think about it. Eating and cooking is the, really the only way that we nourish our bodies and feed our minds and our souls. And anytime that you have an opportunity to listen to how your food sounds in the pan and pay attention to the sizzle, whether you're raising the temperature or lowering the temperature or the heat, it really is important to connect to your food in that way and to figure out what's going on. So see, I'm turning these little by little to make sure that they evenly brown on all sides. I don't want one side to be browner than another, so I'm just paying attention as closely as possible. It's also important to look for the hot spots on your pan. Right now, this one is right here. So I wanna make sure that all of my food is more so directed on that spot and alternate as much as possible. These are almost done, just a few more minutes. They're looking beautiful. Look how gorgeous these look. Ah, so exciting. So the lamb is beautifully browned. They are looking gorgeous. They're still soft in the center, so what I wanna do now is put them on the sizzle plate and put them in the oven. So then that way, they stay warm and they continue to cook internally as we put them inside the oven and we prepare the other dishes. Put them in there. So now let's prepare the zucchini harvest, but first I wanna start on the farro. Now I'm gonna work on preparing the farro for the strawberry and mint summer salad. And farro is an awesome grain. It's called an ancient grain, and it has more fiber and more nutritional properties than brown rice. And I love it because it's extremely versatile. So the way I cook my farro is I just take my pot, and this is a half cup of farro, I just pour it right in. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to put my water inside of it, and then just swish it around just to get all of the dust off and just clean it ever so slightly. And I just like to do this little swishing motion right here. Next, I'm just going to drain out the water as much as possible. And then now I'm gonna put it on the stove because I want to eliminate the moisture and this is called dry toasting. And what this does is it prepares the grain to be cooked and gives it that like delicious, gorgeous, nutty flavor. So I'm just gonna turn the pan on a medium heat. The grains are pretty wet right now, but I'm just gonna go with my rubber spatula and just move it around. And it's so important to keep continuously move it around so then that way it doesn't get stuck to the bottom and burn. This just takes a few seconds. So the moisture is pretty much gone inside of the pan and I can smell that like gorgeous nutty flavor. So now what I'm gonna do is put three quarters of a cup of water in there and a nice good pinch of salt and mix it around as much as possible. And I'm gonna put the lid on this and bring this to a boil on the stove. 
This is only going to take a couple minutes because I only have a half cup of farro and three quarters of a cup of water. So once I bring it to a boil, I'm going to lower it to a simmer and then just let it cook. So the pot's been on the pan for about a few minutes now, and as you can see, it's already at a, at a rolling boil. So now what I want to do is lower this all the way down to low, and I don't take the cover off because you want the steam in there to cook the grains, and that's the secret to cooking grains properly, is you bring it up to a boil, you never take the cover off, and then you lower it down to a simmer, and you just let it continue cooking until all the water inside evaporates. I think grains are a really important staple to add into your diet because, again, it is extremely grounding and nourishing for your body. It nourishes your root chakra and it also adds a ton of fiber because it's so important for your digestion. There are a lot of diets out there that don't call for grains and I hear this all the time. Oats are bad, rice is bad, but the truth is it's really not bad. It's really a matter of finding balance within your diet and learning how to incorporate grains into your diet in an appropriate way. So now it's been about six minutes and as you can see I'm just going to tilt the pan. The grains are plump, they are beautiful, there's almost no water left in here. So now this is the perfect time to shut off the heat but it's really important to keep the cover on because this way the steam is going to cook all of the grains and make them perfectly cooked and beautiful. So the farro has been steaming for about a good eight minutes now and I want to show you how well this is cooked. So now is the time to take off and look how beautiful these are. They're plump, they're luscious, they look amazing and they're fully cooked. And since I'm using these in a salad, what I want to do is cool them because you, if you keep it in this vessel, it's not going to cool properly. So I've lined a sheet tray with some parchment paper and I'm just going to spread out the grains. This is the easiest and best way to cool grains. And you can do this with rice, with quinoa, with any kind of grain. And this is the fastest, easiest way to cool them is spreading them out on a sheet tray just like this. And I'm gonna set these aside so we can work on prepping the zucchini hummus. This is one of my favorite dishes to make and every single time I make it, people just love the taste of this. So it's my no bean hummus that I use zucchini as the base. Zucchini is an amazing vegetable. It's a wood element vegetable and it promotes eye health. It helps with thyroid and adrenal functions. It helps with weight loss and circulation in your body as well. So to prep this, the first thing I'm gonna do is just peel off the skin just like this. You can keep the skin on, but I prefer to keep it off because it gives it a little bit of a bitter taste. And if you want to keep the skin on, if you want the hummus to be green, you can do so as well. But I prefer to just take it off altogether. I use zucchini instead of beans for hummus because it makes it much easier to digest. A lot of people can't digest legumes very well because we don't have the proper amount of amino acids in our body to naturally digest all of the beans and legumes that we eat. So this is just an easier and more digestible way of making hummus and it tastes super good. So now that I have the zucchini completely peeled, what I want to do is chop off the very top part and the ends and then just cut them into pretty even one inch or one and a quarter inch rounds. And I'm going to parboil these. Parboiling is a really great cooking method because it is very gentle on the system and it's a gentle way of cooking your foods. It adds moisture in your foods and it's just really softening on the body. So I'm gonna take our little spider and then I already have some salted boiling water going and I'm just going to put these in there for probably four or five minutes. So as our zucchini cooks and parboils, I'm just going to squeeze the lemon and prepare the rest of the ingredients. Now whenever you prepare a lemon, it's really good to just get in there and just squeeze the lemon down like this. And I'm gonna cut it in half and all I need is half of a lemon juice. So I'm just gonna squeeze this in there. 
really get in and get all of that amazing lemon juice. And lemons are actually really amazing foods because they are pH balancing in your body and they are alkalizing in your body, which is super important. And if you wake up every morning and have a full glass of water with a slice of lemon, you are readjusting your stomach and your body to accept more food and absorb more food energetically and disperse that energy in your body in a much better way. So I'm just gonna pour this in there to start our prep. So it's been a few minutes since this has been parboiling and the vegetable is tender but not too cooked, which is where you want it. So I'm just gonna put that right inside the Vitamix. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a half cup of tahini. And tahini is amazing. It's ground up sesame, and it's actually really, really good for you. It has more protein in it than most nuts and milk. And I love the smoky, nutty flavor of tahini. So I'm gonna pour that right inside there. Then I have about two tablespoons of maple syrup. And adding the maple syrup in here will balance out the sourness and the bitterness of all the other ingredients. And then I have one clove of garlic, and then I have a quarter cup of water, and then I just want to put a good pinch of salt in there, and then whip it all together. Oh, it smells amazing. This is my favorite kind of hummus to make because again, it's more digestible, it tastes delicious, and it's just a nice alternative to putting chickpeas or legumes inside your hummus. And the flavor of this hummus goes perfectly with the lamb. So the last recipe that I'm doing today is the strawberry and mint summer salad with a strawberry vinaigrette. And I'm gonna start with the vinaigrette. I've already pulsed up about a quarter cup of strawberries with a little bit of water that I'm going to just put into the bowl to start. Next, I'm gonna take about two tablespoons of olive oil and just eyeball that, maybe a little bit more. Now I have one tablespoon of maple syrup one tablespoon of Dijon mustard. And this adds a nice sour bite into it. It's very good to balance out those flavors. And then about half of a lemon that I've juiced up already. And then a nice pinch of salt. And then just whisk that all together and make sure to blend it really, really well. Anytime you add olive oil and you make a vinaigrette just like this, you really want to make sure that it's blended really evenly and it has like a nice silky texture. Oh, that smells so good. Let's try it. I want to try this, make sure. Oh, that's incredible. All right, now let's get started on the salad. So I want to talk about strawberries for a second because who doesn't love strawberries? They are so delicious and so sweet and believe it or not, they're actually really low in sugar and in traditional Eastern medicine, they're used to treat dry cough and sore throat and they have a lot of phytochemicals in it that actually are really good for your heart health. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to start by prepping these and cutting them into quarters. Actually, I'll cut them a little bit down further because these are really big strawberries. In this salad, strawberries are the main feature because it's the summertime, they're the best in the summertime, and I think that they go really well with the sweetness of the lamb and the savory taste of the hummus, and they're super, super good. The next thing I'm going to start chopping are these sugar snap peas, and these are so delicious. And you mostly have these in the spring and the summertime. So I'm gonna chop these into about a half inch diagonals. Snap peas are really good um, 
for so many different reasons. It's, they help with edema, they help with digestion, and they're actually really a great source of protein as well. They also alleviate constipation and have a lot of bone building calcium in them. And they're super delicious and they're really sweet and I love having them raw just like this. I'm just gonna cut a few on a diagonal. We need about a quarter cup. But I always like throwing in a little bit extra because they're really delicious. I'm gonna start chopping up some fennel. And if you've never had fennel before, it is a delicious vegetable and it's in the metal element. And what this is great for is for anti-inflammatory purposes, they're really great for bloating and for digestion as well. So I just want a few pieces of fennel in there. The last thing I want to cut are just a few slices of red onion. And I want to cut these in a salad slice. And I'll show you exactly how that's done. So if you look at an onion, you see these lines here and these are the grains of the onion. I want to cut against the grain very thinly and this is called a salad slice. So I just want to cut these very thinly, almost like shavings. I just need a few pieces. And that's about it. That's like a quarter cup and that's pretty much all you need. So now let's assemble the salad and get to eating. So now we're at the most exciting part, which is plating. And to me, whenever you prepare a meal and really artfully plate all of your food, it makes you proud and confident and just really excited to eat. I don't know anybody who has ever seen an aesthetically beautiful plate of food and said, no, I don't wanna eat that. It always just makes you so excited to eat, especially when the ingredients are whole and nutritious and really good for you. So I have these beautiful plates here. And really, the first thing you need to start to think about is what kind of plate are you going to be featuring your food on? What I wanna do is put the hummus inside here and I'm just gonna start decorating as best as possible. So since this is a mixed composition type of meal where I wanna highlight the lamb, the hummus, and the salad, I'm just gonna start, I think, with the salad. So what I wanna do, since I'm adding in all of these elements together, I just wanna take the dressing and pick a part of the plate, I'm probably gonna choose right here, and just sort of pour the dressing on it because I want the flavors of the dressing to be on the bottoms of the salad as well as the top. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is take my frise and just really nicely place it down on the plate. Being careful not to overcrowd it as well because there's a lot of other ingredients. So next I'm gonna take these mint leaves and just put them whole inside the salad. And of course, you can take all of these ingredients and put them in a bowl and mix them together with the dressing, absolutely. But I really think that doing it this way is just so aesthetically pleasing and it gives me a lot of joy to just play with my food in this way and make it so beautiful just for me. So then I'm gonna stick some fennel in here. That's really pretty. And then some snap peas on top. Of course, the strawberries. A few red onions, I'll just break them up into little pieces and put them on. That looks so pretty already. And then I'm gonna take some more dressing and then just spoon it on. That looks so pretty. And then I'm gonna take some farro and put it on top as well. And just sprinkle it on. It's really nice to add a grain into your salads because again, it balances out all of the other ingredients and adds in fiber into the dish. The last thing are the pumpkin seeds and just sprinkle these on. Pumpkin seeds are really awesome because they're the one seed that actually has an insane amount of protein in it and they taste delicious. And I think it's about a quarter cup 
of pumpkin seeds have like 15 grams of protein in it. It's really great. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this little dish here that I got, it's so cute. And I'm gonna spoon the hummus right inside as gracefully as possible. Awesome, I just need a little bit. And then I'm gonna top that off with some black sesame seeds just on top. What I also wanna do is put the lamb down right over here and I wanna take the hummus and just sort of smear it on so the lamb sort of has somewhere to live on the plate. And that looks so pretty. So last but not least, I'm gonna take my skewers and I'm just going to play with angles here and see what looks best. Maybe we'll do that. And then this one could maybe be... It's really important when you're plating to have an element of height in there as well because your dish ends up looking way more refined and really beautiful. So that's it. This is our beautiful dish and our beautiful meal. So it is a Israeli lamb kebab with a savory no bean hummus made from zucchini and a sweet and cooling strawberry and mint summer salad with a strawberry vinaigrette. So I wanna try this lamb and it looks tender and delicious. I'm gonna try it with the zucchini. Oh my God, it's so good. It's so tender. The lamb is perfectly cooked. Oh, and the zucchini hummus has that really smooth consistency and it pairs so well with this. Mmm. Let's see how the salad turned out. It's so refreshing and so delicious. Mm. The crisp and the sweetness and the tartness of the crunch of this salad is to die for. It's my favorite, absolute favorite summer salad. So I hope you've enjoyed this show and at the very least it's opened up your minds to look at food completely differently, to focus on nourishing your energy system, and to look at cooking overall as a sensual healing process. Cooking is an amazing form of self-love and self-care and it's a skill I think everybody should know how to do in order to understand how to nourish your energy system and really heal yourself with food. Thanks so much to everybody who has supported me in making this show, to Gourmet Affair Supermarkets in Greenpoint, Brooklyn, to DeGren North America for the beautiful flatware and dinnerware that they've given me, and then also to Poppy Row Apparel. It's a modular clothing line made from all natural eucalyptus, and you can check them out at www.poppyrow.com. For the full recipe, you can check it out on my website at www.kiellyjl.com. And if you want to work with me directly to understand your energy system and how to heal yourself through food, definitely send me a message. I'm always looking to talk to you and I want to help as many people as possible. You can send me a message on my website as well. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy, take care, and be well. Bye.